Recording in progress.
Okay, we're about to start. 49th regular session of the 20th City Council is now called to order. Invocation by Honorable Councilor Malvern Esparcia, followed by the singing of the Lupang Hinirang and the Cagayan de Oro March. Please rise. Let's put ourselves in the holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Salamat gino kami tanan nagkatapok na pagkarong hapuna para isigutan ang mga nakadaiyang mga hinisigutanan para sa rakbayan sa kagayan de oro. Lord, continue to bless each one of us. Kami mga opisyalis na gibutanan sa katawan. Please, Lord, continue to bless us na kami nasa mayang panglawas o kami makasinabot o kami makaiusa para sa dakbayan sa Cagayan de Oro. Lord, bless all the people of Cagayan de Oro now celebrating Igalai Festival for the entire month of August. Please to continue, Lord, to bless us o bantayan ang kalinaw. This we ask to Christ our Lord. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang magiliw, kaya sa sinahanan, alam ng puso sa dikit mo'y buhay. Upang pinirang, huyag ka ng magiging, sa manlulupin, di ka pasisigil, sa nagatang tutok sa simoy at sa langit mong pangraw. Please be seated. Mr. Secretary, please do the roll call. Honorable Jocelyn B. Rodriguez, City Vice Mayor and Presiding Officer. For the First District Councilors, Honorable Agapito Roberto G. Swan, 
Honorable Roger G. Abaday, Honorable J. R. Pascual, Honorable Amy Rose P. Moreno, Honorable Romeo V. Calizu, Honorable George S. Goking, Honorable Jose Pepe S. Abu Jr., Honorable Malvern E. Esparcia. For the second district councillors, Honorable Ivuna Yasin B. Imano, Honorable Maria Lourdes S. Gaani, Honorable Joelyn Mercedes L. Balaba, Honorable James K. Judith II, Honorable Ian Mark Q. Nakaya, Unlib, Honorable Edgar S. Cabanlas, Honorable Christian Rostico M. Achas, Honorable Josette G. Magtahas Daba. For the ex officio members, Honorable Yan Lam S. Lim, Liga ng mga Barangay President, and Honorable John Michael Elseno, CTSK Federation President. There is quorum, Madam Presiding Officer. Quorum is here by certifying. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, our visitors who are here today. Councillors, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Lagi, tepa, kadali. Kadali sa. Then, uh, of course, those who are watching us right now, fellow Kagayanons, Maying uh, hapon sa tanan, I would like also to thank those who condole with condole us, send their condolences to us in our times of grief. No, when my uh, nephew passed away, thank you very much for the flowers, for the messages, the texts, and for visiting the wake. The kanka is salamat, and uh, thank you very much in behalf of the Rodriguez family. So, uh, ahan ako. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. So, I would like also to thank those who greeted me on my birthday, August 3. Thank you very much for sending your messages again. Thank you, hope to see you after um, the session, okay? S yes, uh, you have the floor, uh, Councillor, Honorable Councillor Edgar, Attorney Edgar Cabanlas, Majority Floor Leader. Thank you very much, uh Madam Presiding Officer, Vice Mayor Bibot Rodriguez, and uh, uh, in behalf of the majority uh, of the City Council, uh, we are extending wholeheartedly our greetings of happy birthday to our Vice Mayor. We will not ask you how young are you because uh, <laughs> uh, that's not necessary anymore. And uh, of course, our uh, profound condolences to the Rodriguez family for the uh, demise, uh, untimely demise of nephew of the nephew of our uh, vice mayor. Thank you very course, much, uh, Majority uh, Floor Leader. Uh, I was not able to be there uh, to visit because I was somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Now, good afternoon to the members of the City Council, Vice Mayor. Be both members of the media, visitors, guests that we have here present, members of our PNP, and to our dear Kagayanons who are watching us on their respective uh, social platforms. Madam Chair, I would like to request uh, Councillor uh, uh, Maria Lourdes Gani to lead the singing of Happy Birthday. First. Oh. Oh. Nakabalos da, nakabalos. May ngapon ka na tong tanan. May request everybody to please stand. Ay, okay, Vice Mayor Nick. Kamu <laughs> Dungan tatanan ha. Dungan. And also the people in the gallery would like to request to sing with us. Yes. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Pastor. Happy birthday to you. Happy 
Happy birthday, Vice Mayor Bebot Rodriguez, from all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Majority Floor Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. May I move to dispense the reading of the minutes of the previous session of this uh, City Council and to consider the furnishing thereof as reading itself. Any second? Uh, Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby approved. I likewise moved for the approval of the said minutes. Any second? second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Uh, into this session, Madam Chair, three members of the City Council has uh, signified uh, their uh, intention to yeah. deliver a special report. Yes, uh, we will do that later on. Okay. Uh, no. One, uh, the first one would be Councillor Ivona Yasini Imanu uh, regarding the review of internal security, security plan of the city. Second would be Councillor Roger Abadai who will be talking about stray dogs in Rio de, Bol de Oro Boulevard. And the third would be Councillor Bernie Sparsia Abugu flooding. But before we proceed, Madam Chair, we would like to recognize we have a special visitors this afternoon. We have uh, the, the we have the candidates of the Queen CDO 2023. Number two, we have also the Cagayan de Oro candidate for Li Little Miss Mindanao 2023. Uh, first, uh, we would like to request Barbie. Barbie Neri, who is the coordinator of the Queen CDO 2023, to introduce the delegates of this uh, Miss Queen CDO 2023. To the 20th City Council, to all the visitors, guests, media, and to the people of Cagayan de Oro, good afternoon. Thank you for allowing us to present. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, move to suspend the rules. Sorry. A any second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is by carried. Proceed. By Thank you for allowing us to present the 20 official candidates of Queen of CDO 2023. Now, let me give you a quick um, background about Queen of CDO. This is actually a pageant for the LGBT community on its second year. Now, why Queen of CDO? Queen of CDO is only the, is the pageant that will amplify the voices of the LGBT and magnify the faces of our LGBT community here in Cagayan de Oro. What's special about this is that this is an effort of all the LGBT leaders of Cagayan de Oro City. And I hope that one day we will be able to institutionalize Queen of CDO because the vision is to create a powerhouse of beauty here in Cagayan de Oro, not only limited to cisgendered men and women, but also for our fellow LGBT community. Let me introduce to you again the 20 official candidates of Queen of Cagayan de Oro 2023. Hi, good day everyone. Mikey Lim Rubin from Barangay La Pasan. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Claude Cortez, Barangay Bonbon. Pakpak mo. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Jaji Gimalen and I come to represent Barangay Bugo. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Chan, bringing the pride of Barangay Gusa. Arcy Gan, Barangay Makasandi. Bella Dupendi, Barangay Ipunan. CJ Kihara Denzo, Experience Beauty and Fun, Experience Barangay Kamamanan. Place D, everyone. My name is Emma Almiranti Tuyor, Barangay 17. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Denise Kebson, proudly representing the most child-friendly barangay in Cagayan de Oro City. It's with luck, Barangay Pagatpat. Good afternoon. Once again, I Art John Dallas Ranes, 20 years old, representing the proud soldiers of Barangay Patag. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Trixie La Victoria, and I'm representing Barangay Kanituan. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Justin Paraiso. I am bringing the name of Barangay Kaoswaga. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Grover Goldakifer from the heart of Hinterland, Barangay of Cagayan, our city, Lumbia. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miles Roa Babia Kagapi, 27 years old, and I am proud to represent Barangay in the Hag. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Glenn Crampo, proud and dignified to represent Barangay 27. A pleasant afternoon, everyone. My name is Kendall Lanzadera Sunkipal Kailing, all the way from the heart of the city, Barangay 35. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Clarence Ho Otero, all the way from Barangay Nazareth. Maayong hapon ka natong tanan. I am Kirk Vertodoso Popiolek, representing the Barangay, celebrating the Layag Festival, and the home of our city councillor, Ayan Rosico Aches, Barangay Puerto. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, uh, uh, we will also recognize and uh, the Miss uh, Miss Little Philippines Kagan de Oro candidate, Michaela Chanel O Castro from the Lumbia, from Lumbia. Mabuhay, my name is Michaela Chanel O. Castro. To out Vice Mayor, City Councilors, Media Guests of Session, oh, sorry. on behalf of Mr. Randy P. Salcedo, CEO and Head of Little Miss Mindanao Beauty Pageant 2023 on August 31, oh, sorry, on August 19, 2023, 1 p.m. at Lim Ketkai Mall, Rotunda 2023. Thank you. So can we have yeah. photos uh, taken? Did he do it? Huh? 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 Huh?
Okay, uh, let's resume. Uh, move to lift the order of suspension. Okay, session resume. Like to acknowledge the presence of Councillor Suset Daba. Okay, the first speaker for uh, today. Madam Chair, may I request that uh, Councillor uh, Ivona Imano, Yasini Imano be recognized for, his, for her special report. Councillor Ivi Imano, you are recognized. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to the members of the 20th City Council, good afternoon. To those who are watching us on social media and listen, listening to us on the different platforms on the radio, good afternoon to each and every one. Belated happy birthday, Vice Mayor. Thank you again. And to Sir Bernie as well. I will try to make my report as short and as concise as possible. And I do have a little presentation. Last August 1, we all celebrated the opening or the grand launching of our Higalaay Festival. Everyone was, uh, for the first time, we used the Rio de Oro Boulevard and it was it was happy, it was one of a kind. It was a very special moment, not just for us in government, but also in Cagayan de Oro City. And I would like to say and extend our gratitude and our congratulations to our local chief executive who spearheaded you know, the opening of our festivities for our Cagayan de Oro City Festival, I mean Fiesta. And however, during the celebration, or while the celebration was happening, there were also other events in the city that happened and transpired as well. First off, uh, in Upper Puerto, uh, there was a crime that was committed. Na ay gipusil sa Upper Puerto during the time that we were having our launching. Second, a few hours after the launching, the, uh, after the rave party, I was shocked to have read from a media source, specifically from Bombo Radio Cagayan de Oro. Can I have the next slide, please? Now, there were two. Duha kabatan on. The second one, the other one. Na ay duha kabatan on. The other one there. Na they joined the Hilgalaay rave party. And in the early mornings of August 2, Kaning duha kabatan on, as stated there in the article of Bombo Radio, uh, gihunungan sila sa tulok katao nga nagmotor o giattempt sila uglabay sa maong Rio Boulevard. Now, the next one happened on August 2 at 10 in the morning. Where, as you can see, and as we have all known, or we were, how could we say, they were daring, armed robbery, heavily, heavily armed, brandishing their long firearms as well as their caliber 40, as if there was no one to fear as well as to cause grave fear to our people. And as you can see by location, this happened in the very heart of Kogon, where there are a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of parents, are around. Now to my colleagues of the 20th City Council, we, with the mayor or the local chief executive, as well as with the tourism, we have prepared a month-long celebration of the festival. Now I have three big questions for us. Number one, 
are we, are we, all of us, our families, our children, our nieces, our nephews, at the mga lolo, at the mga lola, our guests from neighboring municipalities or tourists who would come here nga support sa ato during the time of the festival. Are we all safe to go, join, support even our local our local uh, initiatives for the said festivity? Are we still safe? Because personally, Yesterday, nakita na ko, sa paglabay na ko diya sa Ketkay, nitindog na ang maunga ka tong Rose, Rosemary Peria, tong peryahan. And four of my four of my nephews, happy kay sila, nga gusto sila mo adto. As much as I want them to create memories, I am also scared for them as well. Nga simba ko na yung mahitabo, untoward incidents. ba? So I think this is something that we have to see and to get answers from. Number two, kaya pa ba sa atong local enforcement agencies nga ma-uphold ang atong safety sa adlaw-adlaw in the next few days, in the next few weeks nga natay festivities and maybe even beyond the time of the festival. And number three, maybe I can just ask, what happened to our intelligence committee as Councillor Caliso cited and said during the interview after the said incident nga dili enough ang mere police visibility. I think he was re referring to the preemptive activity such as intellect, uh, intelligence gathering for preventive measures of crimes and criminalities in our city. Now, our city is the city of golden friendship is once again now because of this event is once again tainted during the sauna of uh, president bongbong marcos i was given the privilege to be present during his sauna and as the csfi or the uh, congressional spouse of my brother congressman bambi we were able to talk to a few friends amo silang gi aghat gi invite sa atong festival because we are aware nga we have a month long festival no, we have our whitewater rafting, we have our produce, we have wonderful products in the city that we can show to people in Luzon and in Visayas. But because of the headline, kay niabot man siya sa GMA News National as well as Rappler, we had a few calls from a few of our friends, nga atong giaghat, nga moanhi, and they were asking if Ipadayon pa ba daw namo ang among invitation sa ila sa panahon sa Kapistahan, sa Dakbayan, sa Cagayan de Oro. And last Thursday, I was given the chance to talk to my brother. And then he told me, Siya may mong plano. Ato bang padayunon? And with a heavy heart, might I say, I told him nga, maniid na lang sa ta. Ato sang bansay-bansayon ang panahon. Ato sang lantawon ang panahon, kay ako, for their safety as well, because they already have the notion if you're in Mindanao, gubot ang Mindanao. And I want to take away that notion, so that, you know, people from north, from the north and from Visayas, one hina unta o Mindanao. So, anak ko, ato na sa taon. Now, to my colleagues of this August body, I think it is safe to say that intelligence work, you no, know, the intelligence community, can only be effective if we provide them with enough resources to combat crimes before they happen. Siguro you will ask, ngano makader ko ingon, or why do I have the authority, or maybe the descendancy, to even bring this up as a, a, very, a very grave concern. I would like to say, na siguro kuy gamay, gamay nga kahibalubahin ani sa akong pag-uban-uban kang Congressman Bambi when he was the executive uh, local executive of Misamis Oriental, but more so, I have panako na sabtan ang gipasabot sa mga amahan nga si Kani Mayor Dongkoy, why gapaning kamot siya nga ma-uphold ang peace and order sa atong dakbayan, gani giangaan pa gani siya og the peacemaker. Now, why do I state this? Because the concern stems from the very advocacy that they have fought for for the longest of time. And us, as representatives, you know, the entire city council, the entire uh, people that we call the government in the city, 
No, and maybe as well as I would maybe, maybe lang. Correct me if I may be wrong. Maybe we have not fulfilled our moral obligation as keeper of the purse. Basin dili ego ang atong gi-appropriate nga funds, atong peace and order funds, no? So as to prevent such crimes from happening. Sa panahon pagyod nga nag-open ta sa atong Higalaay Festival. Now the event, the recent event has clearly reminded us of our mandate as state as stated in the RA 7160 or in section 16 of the general welfare welfare clause of the L local government code now we need to uphold the peace and order of our city ang katiling ang katiling banong kaakuhan nato isip mga pinili og sinaligan sa katawhan ning atong dakbayan nga we call it public office we hold public office because the public trusted us. And public office is public trust. And dili na to sayangon ang ilang pagsalig sa ato. Nga gani sila may nagbutang sa ato din he. Now my prayer, Madam Chair, I have three actually. One, let us assure the public, the entire city of Gagayan de Oro, that we are working on their general welfare as well as their public safety. Second, public officials, us, all of us, are still in control of our public uh, peace and order, our general peace and order. And lastly, we call on our local chief executive. Yes, he is working hard. That may be to possibly initiate in the review of our internal security plan together with various law enforcement agencies or the Peace and Order Council of our city. Now, as I close, Madam Chair, I believe it is something that all of us in these four walls would understand and we hold dear as we took oath last year that our people's general safety is of utmost priority, that they may sleep in the evening in the comforts of their homes, knowing that the very individuals that they have put into office, that they have trusted, are not sleeping around on their worries, on their concerns, and that we are not sleeping around on our responsibilities. So once again, Madam Chair, thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Evie Mano. Yes, uh, any, any comment? Any comment? Uh, Councillor, Councillor Romeo Caliso, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and uh, good afternoon to you. Uh, to my uh, colleagues of uh, the 20th uh, City Council, our guests, and all those who are uh, viewing our session via this social media platform. That was a very good report, uh, Madam Chair. And, uh, well, maybe, uh, I agree, we've got to review our existing internal security plan as uh, the good reporter has said. Actually, we have just approved, that was last month, if I'm not mistaken, our PAPS plan, or, or our public order and public safety plan. But uh, the practice that we've been doing, I think not only in Cagayan de Oro, but uh, almost in all LGUs, is that for every event, for every activity, there should be a security plan. Just like... Uh, what had happened uh, during the launching of uh, the Higalaay Festival. There was a plan, but it was rather hasty, Madam Chair. Because uh, uh, even myself, uh, I got the invitation to attend said activity within a short notice. But uh, a short notice should not be a reason why we cannot plan appropriately even in a hasty mode, Madam Chair. And so, uh, still, 
if we compare, again, the Oros this and other situation to other highly urbanized cities, we can say that still we've got the lowest number of uh, uh, crime-related incidents, uh, Madam Chair. But uh din eh, kay naanad man ta nga wala kaayot git target sa mga threats, especially the threats of terrorism, the threat of lo uh, lawless violence, and the threat of hard crimes, Madam Chair. Kung sa gani nga may tabo din sa ato, ah, panggit ta, react ta dayon. And that's why, uh, really, uh, this is a challenge uh, for all of us. The executive should know how to plan. The executive should know how to get ready for the security of not only our constituents, not only our people, but also our visitors. So that uh, we cannot hear uh, manifestations, just like what has been manifested by the good reporter, nga, dili na lang kuno niya padayunun to yung mga bisita, kaya duk naman. Uh, I think uh, the better manifestation is that we've got to sell kagayan de oro. But we've got to work together so that it will be safe not only for our people but also for our visitors to go. But as any uh, Higalaay festival, who will come here and visit us to view our activities if uh, we discourage our own visitors to come here, Madam Chair? What we should do is to really come up with an appropriate plan. Uh, in fact, uh, this morning when uh, we had a, a uh, short briefing as regards the activity that I care, the Committee on Civic Military Parade, Madam Chair, naganagod pangutana. Kung sa may pag-secure ni ini, ang safety ni ini. Because until now, uh, uh, I've been telling uh, the co-chairman of... Uh, the uh, committee on the Higala Eye Festival, one of the co-chairmen, uh, Councillor J. Roa Pascual, na mag, mag-designate kita o kinsay overall uh, security overseer for this festa. Para, because it's different from the Council Committee on Public Order and Safety. Uh, I, uh, I was not the one designated for the security committee on this activity, Madam Chair. So uh, maybe uh, we'd rather advise uh, uh, those who are managing the Higelai Festival that as early we should already designate and organize the committee on security. Para naagay atong panjod, atong pangutan on by ni Madam Chair. So again, uh, if there's anything uh, more in aid of legislation, we can still refer this before the Committee on Public Order and Safety, uh, Madam Chair. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor uh, Councillor Romeo Calizo. Yes, Councillor uh, Councillor, Majority Floor Leader, Attorney Edgar Cabanlas, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I'd just like to react to the special report of EV. The executive, the executive uh, department Mayor Kagan Duro has placed the uh, peace and order as the number one agenda of his administration. In fact, when he, uh, af immediately after he took of, uh, oath as mayor of the city, the first thing he did was uh, to buy cars, uh, this, uh, cars for, the, for all the uh, uh, police stations of Kagan Duro. It was never done before. That uh, the priority, the first step, uh, three months of the administration was focused on providing the police. Kada usa sa ilang station with sa mga sakina. Ikadawa, uh, for the first time in the, city, in the history of the city, talking about peace and order, only in this administration of Mayor Clarice Soy, that the Cagayan de Oro Task Force, uh, Oro, uh, or task, task Force or force. composed of army soldiers was uh, organized and now they are deployed. Now, crimes is not in the city, it's not a, co a common occurrence. 
as uh, in fact uh, madam said there is no breakdown of law and order in the city that everybody should be afraid i think the police are still in control other big cities in the in, in the philippines from davao to manila they also have all these uh, uh, nefarious activities of criminals now, so, let us have faith in ourselves. Let us believe in ourselves. As members of the city council, as uh, public officials, people look at us and they will listen to every word that we say. So let us start looking back, analyzing everything that uh, we will be telling our people. Para nga, nga dili ma-describe ni Sukuman. In fact, we should remember nga ang tanan mga economic activities in the cities depends on peace and order. So, if we as members of the city council, as the officials of the city, will say na si Kagayandura is not safe, my God, that would be disastrous to us. So, we have to, we have to be we have to tell ourselves that we are just we are not just ordinary members of the city of the of, the, of, the, of society now we have responsibilities to do we have obligations to do to our people so wala may wala may natural man ang usahal labi nang bago na ang bago pa ang kining police chief of police gabunyagan sa mga kriminal at it dasin men nga kana magpadayon Every administration, huh? I've been in how many administrations? Five mayors before. Kada gina mayor. Nai problema sa peace and order. But it did not engulf the city into chaos because these are isolated cases for me. Dili ini siya yung common occurrence every day. Matanan ng kita mang tago. So ang ato is we should go out and tell the people, show the, show, uh, show the people that we are not afraid. That is what they did in Paris when there was, when there was a, a terrorist attack and so many people died. The Prime Minister of all the neighboring countries went to the streets and marched and said that we are not afraid, that we are in control. That's what the people need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Attorney uh, Edgar Cabalas. Yes, Councillor, uh, let us limit our comments, okay? Uh, kay napamailain nga mo another two. So, uh, Councillor Roger Abaday, you recognize? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Presiding Officer, my colleagues in the 20th City Council, and all people who are listening to us today, especially the police, the PNP. And that is a very good report. I hope the police are also listening. And that, is, that will be their challenge, no? But it does not mean that there was a miscarriage of uh, handling peace and order in the city of Cagayan de Oro. Normal na. Because if you look, if you read the old definition of the police, the police is a city, and the city is the police. Meaning, all of us are police. Sa una, wa pa police, ang mga tao mo ay tinabaga. So, uh, the, even the most powerful, the most richest uh, country, until now, they are experiencing violent crimes every day. If you read the news, grabe ang pangitabo sa Pilipinas. Grabe ang pangitabo sa uban nga uh, region, in Cebu, lately, or in Metro Manila. Normal man na, uh, crime is a social phenomena. Una ang mga klaseng-klaseng tao na sa tanah ng mga it's like birth and death. Nay matao, nasay mamatay. So muna nga kinanglan, all of us must be vigilant. Because the safety of life and property, we do not rest solely to the police or to the government. It's also our obligation to protect ourselves. For example, katong gitulisan, goldsmith, matutunog gold, Dapat, 
this is a reminder to us to review our ordinance, the CCTV ordinance, and the hiring of uh, security. Kung doon na pa sila CCTV, huwag na sila security, that should not happen. Pero ang problema kay doon ay security, di sa siguro gabuto ang huwag laban na ba'y armas, kay preventive, di ba? So, there's something to review on this uh, incident. Uh, the police planning, there are classification of police planning or program, no? Preventive, reactive, and contingency plan. Na yung mupalpag ka ni sa Australia, then that should be reviewed by our police uh, department. And the new police, normal, basta na yung bago gani, chain of command, like what happened sa atong chains of PNP, daghan na yung kriminay tabo. Ano man, there were reorganized, re reorganized, so katong nag-handle sa mga posisyon, very lost, na wala ang control ba. So, I think that is one of the factor nga uh, medyo na-relax ang uban atong police kaya na-reassign. So, wala na siyang contact, no? Again. Another one is uh, uh, kining atong uh, kwa, no? Uh, kining atong kahimtang karon uh, dili man dili sab nga uh, wala dili sab ta secured. Wala man. Uh, we are still safe, no? We are still safe. So we would just like to, well, no? the incident, we just like to uh, remind, I know the German official order has already met this uh, policeman and they are now understanding our peace and order uh, situation with the help of other law enforcement agencies. I think uh, we expect that uh, our peace celebration is uh, peaceful. So all of us will just uh, uh, cooperate. cooperate no? So. I am inviting also that all of us will also review our ordinance, the CCTV and uh, can requiring establishment to hire their security guard para sa ilag. Dili kayo magsalig lang sila sa police na eh, usakain siya din nga, sige lang tulisan. Sige lang, hold up, hold up. Nga naman, they are not hiring uh, security guard <coughs> and no CCTV and that is in our ordinance. So, <coughs> This incident, that those incidents happen, it would be our reminder also to us, legislator, and to the police in the city. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, uh, Roger Abadai, Councillor uh, Attorney Jujut, and Councillor uh, J. Pascal. Yes. Short then? Salamat sa Montanon ng report kang Gonzihala E.B. Imano. Ang ako lang kay sakto ang giingon ni Majority Pro Leader Concel Cabanlas o ni Concel uh, Kaliso o Concel Abaday nga dili magin malikayan ng krimen. Apan ang tinood yun nga trabaho, makita ni mo ang tinood nga katag kung ang epektibo magin na itong kapulisan kung ilang matumbok o ilang masikop ang naghimo sa krimen. Kana lang ang pinaka-importante. Okay, Kaya, thank you. Ba, that was the shortest. I love it. Huwag pa kanin ko na human. Ipahuman na lang na. Oh man, madam, siya, imo na mo ko kitil, pero okay. Hindi ka man ka. Hindi na mo ko isumpay na lang. O sige, isumpay na din. Gapay na, pero mubo. Okay, sige, sige. Ay kabalakan, madam, siya. I will take up my summer time. Ang ako lang, madam, siya, kay dagan mga krimen nga wala pa nasulbad hantod garon. Gawas lang siguro sa katong kaso ni Dr. Andutan nga na ilan lang napasakaan ng kaso, pero ang uban, wala pa yun. So ang ako lang, hangyo, ang tinood nga hagit sa atong kapulisan, Paliyo ko, ipakita e, ninyo gilas nga masulbad ninyo ang atong problema din ni ang krimen, inyong matumbok o inyong masikop ang naghimo sa kaning uh, kaso o insidente sa Mega Gold. Okay, okay. thank you very much. The, the, another short, ano? Yes. Uh, uh, Councilor J. Pascual, you acknowledge? Maying hapon sa tanan, maying hapon, Madam Chair. Ang ako lang is, I have been to almost five events uh, major and parallel activities sa core. And uh, all I can say is, daghan na nga ang mga police na dito. And of course, daghan po na nga ang mga, mga force multipliers like ato mga Coast Guard, Bureau of Fire. And uh, of course, um, nagstorya namin ni Councillor Caliso ganina na dapat i-exhaust yun na to. Kung pwede gani, atong BGMP, <laughs> maapil pa na to, no? Nga to mahangyo. And uh, napatay Navy, na apay daghan ka ayo madam chair and also maybe we can also call on our barangay captains kay sa barangay naa mang gidnay ka nang atong force multiplier nga mga barangay tanod nga to help no kay 
lisod kayo nga madaot ang ato ang festival or ato ang uh, uh, kabibuhan dinhi sa Dakbayan kaluyo sa Ginoo ako uh, mangi ko na hadlok uh, kanang isog da- mangyug ka <laughs> uh, sa kadagan na kung uh, event nya gyud to yes. of course makita gyud nako na nga daghan pod gyud atong mga kapulisan ug atong okay. task force oro so okay. kana lang madam chair nagpasalamat lang ko and uh, of course as general kaliso said na Maybe it was an isolated case. So, okay. di malikayan kaya daghan mag-inom, na yun ay magsinumbaga or what. So, kanat lang, Madam Chair. Thank you very salam. much, uh, Councillor J. Pascual. My own point of view, I do not, uh, yes, there will be shortcomings along the way, no, sa itong kapulisan, but I still believe that Cagayan de Oro is a peaceful city. I, every day when I am interviewed, I always say, you come visit Cagayan. It is a peaceful city. I want to boost the economy. I want more food in the table. Each time, na inauguration mo ato ko, and I thank the owner for giving food to our employees, for giving additional jobs, no? This is a, an isolated case. I am part of the, I'm the vice chair of the Peace and Security Council. Kada meeting na mo, there are plans for that. Ang naitabo lang, nga na sunod-sunod ang nahitabo then of course we have to look into that matter but uh, with this kind of a uh, situation is not really that uh, we think is very worse ang atong uh, dakbayan continue to invite your friends continue to invite that Cagayan de Oro is a peaceful city let's have let's help boost the economy more employees more food in the table mo na ako even misor i said i will always say Misor is a peaceful city, and I know that it is a peaceful city, right? Uh, Councillor Romeo, Carlos, we've been doing that. We, didn't, we have these meetings, Peace and Security Council. And uh, siguro isolated cases, siguro enhance uh, what is lacking and probably discuss with the new, with the new PNP uh, chief, no? Colonel Radam, right? Because the Oro Task Force is already in place. Are they in place already? Are they deployed? They are. So there's no reason, okay? So thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, who will uh, render the previous speech is uh, Councillor? Councillor uh, Abaday. Councillor Abaday, you are recognized in the Bernie. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, thank you very much, Majority Plur. So Thank you, guys, uh, Gif. Kambais mana gigi kan? Udili we Taiwan nak? Memang bahasa cing 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 cawu kau. Councilor Edgar na. Councilor Kamarles mana? Thank you very much. Okay. Ah, to all members of the Twenty Eight City Council and all people who are listening to us and watching us virtually, main hapun sa tanan. Ah, the first place I would like to ask, naka walk. Oh, jog na ba mo dia sa atong boulevard? Did you experience? Wala pa? Very good. This is my report. Nakawak na ka. For those who have not yet, please, please, I'll invite you tomorrow. Nakaanto na ba ka lagi? Yes, yes. That's why I'm having this report. Because of my experience, observation. This is the product of my experience and observation while walking and jogging dia sa atong... Rio de Oro Boulevard. Final na magiging nga ngalan ni? Wala pa ba? Wadi na siya ba? Okay, anyway. Kaya nga itong Boulevard, the Rio de Oro Boulevard, it holds a very significant significant importance sa atong siyudad. A major showcase for tourists and central hub for physical fitness and Recreation. Anak kini mudi ag buntag. Lebih na satu di Sunday. Na dia mag sumba. Na dia mga religious group. Na pun dia mag prenups, prenups, perpa picture picture. Na tanan. Everything recreation na dia. Kano? Then so center hub for physical fitness and recreation. No. Ang busa. The city also has to keep that boulevardo. Secure, safety, clean, and harmony for the individuals within using that uh, boulevard. Now, kung wana mo dia, tanam makita nyo na, tanan na mga walkers, joggers, gadala sa ilang uh, domesticated animals, kining 
pets no labi na mga uh, dogs so in any bread breeding uh, gagikan sa gagmay pa sa dagko na po diha mga uh, dogs or uban pa diha nga mga animals nga suri-suri diha sa atong boulevard okay lang okay lang kanang walay specific owner pero kanang kadala diha urag uh, i don't know do kung ila ba on Diya ra nila i-dispose ang mga pupo o pipi sa ilang mga ilang kwan dio didang so <laughs> pieces of their uh uban pa gani naay gawban nila nga mga hybrid duwa tulo sa katawo nga magjag uh, uh banon niya mga hybrid ra ba na unless wala ikot dagan magtabo-tabo dia ikaw kung basing makrosoldani mong dagway uh, delikado di ba So, muna usa sa inyong makita diya sa atong uh, boulevard mo, sa buntag or hapon. Na diya, klase-klase nga ako ano. One time, one morning, I walk there, oh, from, what is that, that is uh, five kilometers, five kilometers, back, back to back. Ay, pag sakay ko sa balik ko man, pag sakay ko sa kisakinan, tingala ko, very smelly ang akong sakinan. Uh, naog ko, pagtanaw ko, na may napilit dito dahil yung mga pupo. Natunok man ko sa kuhan. And mine. I thought, dito lang sa... Binas to kwarta man to. So, next morning, ako naging tanaw. Next morning, balik ko, tanaw ko yun. Wala may mga protective. <laughs> Ang mga ero diya, nga kanang kapandalon diya. Wala ay mga pit sheet or pad. Kanang matiras ba to contender waste and kanang para mo ihi mo kwa dili gid mabutang unta dia kay lain da maning matunok ka sa kanang pupuhugaw sa to kay mas bae pa matunok ka sa sa object kay imong makuha mag, pero matunok ka kiang kiang ka gyud di papahid pahid mo nang smile maka very sanitary try try to go there be, be careful be careful magtanaw gi ka sa ground kay masing matunok ka sa hugaw hugaw what i mean is makaulaw sa atong mga bisita o kilang kay Diyoro kay ugaw ba na yung boulevard nga muro ba na yung sudunon ka rin no? so na naman tayo existing ordinance ordinance uh, providing for the rules and regulation for the control and welfare of animals and providing penalty for the violation so I I'm inviting the uh, law enforcement sabay mga enforce na ni ang mga enforce na ni siguro ka mga barangay Uh, neighboring barangays na dia or the police the city health and the barangay officials so they will be the one to impose wala may nag-impose na ni i i do not know kung mga barangays karon na nabas lay ordinance ni nga kining uh, uh, kining mga stray animals so madam chair uh, i am repairing this uh, report to the Committee on Health and Committee on uh, the Concerned Committee. Uh, Liga ng Barangay. Uh, oh, ABC. So that uh, we will be able to address this uh, uh, recurring uh, problem now in our uh, boulevard. Ito nang kung ano boulevard kay muna nang center of Kwagaron na anaan sa mga atong mga turista. No? So that is my Report, okay. uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, refer to the... Uh, uh, okay, Councillor Gurley, Balaba, you're recognized. If, uh, hello, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Happy birthday and oh, thank uh, you, thank you. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the RCB has already issued a guidelines that prohibit... Um, Uh, the uh, your pets, no? The inside the uh, Rio de Boulevard, Rio Rio de Oro Boulevard. Yeah. There's already a uh, 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 prohibition, even uh, the uh, carrying of um, plastic um, uh, water, but uh, mineral water. Uh -oh plastic dili pwede na sa sulod ya sa um, Rio de Boulevard um, 
ano, I have to admit that I am a dog lover. Dog lover. Yes, yes. I know. <laughs> I have 13 dogs. Yes. And uh, um, it it's really disappointing. No, I wish I could bring my pets there. No, to in walking and exercise, but it's really disappointing because um, how uh, there there's um, the people no have been given a fair warning from the RCB and from the executive branch. Na whenever their um, pets poo, they have to pick it up. No, we have, we have to be responsible pet owners. So. Uh, Morning na hitabo, gibawalan na hinoon kay daghan gyud sa ato ang uh, wala pud naga sa maong mando. So, bawal ang mga um, pets diha sa as far as I know, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, Councilor J Pascual mo na. Madam Chairman ng hapon, naay kuan ani dinhi sa City Information Office. Dated um, July 31, mga pets o bottled water ginadili na pasulod sa Rio de Oro Boulevard. Gipahibalo karon sa technical working group sa Rio de Oro Boulevard nga gididan na ang mga pet owners na magdala sa ilang mga binuhing iro, iring o guban pang mga pets sulod sa boulevard. So good karon at laua, Julio 31. Lakip sa ginadili, mao ang Pagpadala og bottled water kay bisan asa ra kini ilabay og ibilin sa mga nagdala hinungdan nga magkalat ang basura sulod sa boulevard and uh, gikuan ni ni attorney Jose Edgardo Oy. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh last uh, the two last will be uh, Councilor Bernie and Councilor Roger. Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair just uh, to add and to support also the comment of Gurley Balaba, Madam Chair. Actually, I saw that that post about anang gibawalan yun. I uh, uh, I, I thought nga katong abalaot is for the kuan lang katong clan launching. Pero ako nakita mo ra gusto na gidin nila ipagbawal yun ang plastic o pati ang iro. Ang ako lang comment yun siya, tana dili pa na final. Because in fairness, naman sa yun mga gadala og mga pets nga ginapadaya per nila ilang mga mga ero ang mga malls manggaling ginaalaw galing nila and to be honest kani bitaw atong boulevard kay number 1 ganahan ko kay ang mga tao bisag dili gay exercise mapugos na og jogging so gwapo sa ilang health ikaduha bisag na kay problema pero tungod lang kay gwapo kay ang boulevard tanang makawala mayo sa mental health ang maong boulevard let's expect this nga masa Masa magit ang muan na dia. So, public magin siya. And regarding sa, sa plastic, though I don't know lang kay katong last, sa katong launching na to, Mr. Chair, huwag ko'y nakita nga dagang kay basurahan. Mas, mas okay pa ko anang bahalag ginagmay nga drum, pero daghan every other kanto, kaysa mo yung kung nga may basuran, tuwa sa unahan, dako kayo. I think, Mr. Chair, kung ako sad, Kung nagbitbit ko, tapos na pang po ko'y makita ng butangan basurahan. I'm sure at least malesen siguro na to. Hopefully the TWG dili pa na mag-final about it, Madam Chair. And hopefully may istoryahan sa committee hearing ani, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Bernice Pasi. Yes, last, Councillor Roger Abaday. Uh, for this afternoon lang, Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, I beg to disagree, no? I hope the RCB, Tony Eagle, uh, should also uh, visit the law, Article or Republic Act 8485, the Animal Welfare Act. Uh, dili sab, ako, I am so paksag ko nga dili sa maka, makadala o gero o uh, domesticated animal. Pero as long as it will have to comply, there is a proper uh, pit sheet or pad or any materials that contain their waste, so, gani, Ang sa ubang naib, ubang ordinal sa magbutangan yun o busal ka ng mouth pan ang mga iro mo is para mo is troll, no? So, one one way of caring na healthy ang dog is to let them walk, walk, di ba? So, prohibiting them, that might also be 
uh, violation sa animal welfare act. So I hope that the RCB will also review their uh, memorandum sa banalang issue diha kay uh, to be fair also to the uh, dog uh, handler or dog uh, pit, pit lovers. So, okay. so kana lang. Thank you very much. As we all know, I mean, I've been, I've been to other uh, countries. Wala gyud kuni ko andi to nga dili pasudlo nang iro. Uh, they are pets. They are part of the family. It's a matter of political will nga implement gyud ang atong ordinansa. Like Gurley, she is a dog lover and the rest here, Jay Pascual and the rest of the uh, councillors and part na sa kinabuhi sa usa ka pamilya that they have their own pets to bring with them ang ako is that we cannot really prevent them from going inside kay tumod malibang sila i don't think so para nako ha ako nang opinion because anywhere you go it's just a matter of discipline kung pananglit na ay mo bantay dili gyud siya mo punit ana then give the penalty Kay kung atong pasagdan nga lax lang kay ta sa atong balaod, wala tay himuon, ato na lang din i-prevent the animal from entering, that we don't call them animal, part of our family, from entering in the said place, dili ba day ka na, uh, what for me ha, dili man siguro makatarungan nun. Because some of these uh, pets sleep with their, 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 their families, no? Unya, imo na lang na, kay pinakasayon mang good is to refrain them from going there. Pero kung nai astray dog, ipakuha sa, sa, what you call this? Kanimit ang tawag? City vet. Ako is political will. Nga ma-prevent kining gakahitabo, penalize. Mo na nga ako. Dili lang siguro para na ako. Nga dili na lang yun sila pasudlon. Why should we deprive this family from bringing their dog, their, their, their pets nga Makalipay man na while they are walking, no? Ang ako lang is, what is, empower the ordinance. More good na. Thank you very much. The next uh, reporter, Councillor uh, Bernice Parsha. Dagang salamat, Madam Chair. Kanatun tanan again dagang uh, maying hapon kanatun tanan sa mga nagtanaw karon sa atong uh, Facebook live sa mga naminaw sa radyo maying hapon Madam Chair pagbalin ako sa Kagendi Oro ako gyud taga Balulang pero gi consider gyud nako as second home ang Barangay Bugo kay diya man ako nahimamat nakita ang akong pinakagwapa nga asawa Og diha giyod nandag ko ang akong mga anak sa barangay Bugo. Now, Madam Chair, sa kadugay na mugpuyo sa barangay Bugo, diha na nandag ko akong mga anak. Bisa pag-unsa kakusog sa ulan sa unang mga panahon. Wala giyod ko'y nakita diha nga grabe nga bahaog. Ni, ni sukad ka na among compound diha. Wa gina sukad nga maabtan sa grabe nga baha. Pakikita paliyog sa July, I think kundi ko sa'yo 20 or 21, Madam Chair. I think that's a video. Nagbaha ang akong messenger kay dili lang dito dapit sa lugar sa akong mother-in-law, kundi li halos tanang suna sa bugo na puno gayod sa baha. Paki, paki, play daw, anak. Tanawa. Grabe yun. First time. Nga grabe yung ana ang baha. Dito pa lang sa lugar sa ako, mother-in-law, ang, ang tubig, di na sa kanal mo agi, dito na mo agi mismo sa dalan. O first time yun nga, ang mga tubig na nulod na yun sa balay. Gani, piliyon na nako ni mga pipila na adri, Zone 1, Upper Bantilis, Bugo. Napay isa diri ah, Zone 3, Bugo. O labi na, katong, katong nabahaan sa unang muragsuki na mas grabe na giyod ni Samot. Madam Chair, pipila ang ilang mga komento. Allow me to read this. 
Nay uban nag-ingon nga ang creek near the area is too shallow and almost reaching the height of the dike. There's a dike project was unfinished. Tapos sa uh, uban po na nag-ingon diri na ay mga dakong proyekto sa taas sa may upper puerto nga ilang gidudahan. Akong karon allegedly moy ilang gidudahan nga tungod daw sa medyo dagandagan na mga projects karon diha mo nang grabe nga ulan murag ang mga tubig diha na nipadulong sa mga balay diha sa barangay Bugo kun tan-aw ninyo grabe na tapos daghan gid diha halos first time gayod sa kadugay sa panahon nga wala mabaha i karon ni baha katong suki na sa baha ni samot ni saka ang tubig Mr. Chair, Madam Chair, sorry, uh, allegedly lang na sila yung mga gipang sulti. Do ako nakabantay sa ko nga na yung mga dagong project nga ginabuhat medyo dito sa taas dapita. O mo mga ilang gidudahan, Madam Chair. Ang ako lang, my prayer lang, Madam Chair, hopefully. Uh, since also I am the chairman sa atong risk reduction, o ako pong gihangyo da yun, ang atong, wala man ka rin atong chairman sa public works nga magka-joint committee hearing tanami to investigate. Again, guwapo man na yung mga project, pero basin lang ba nga, nalantay na overlook o guwa na ito mabantayan o basig tanawang gina ito i-review kung ano na yung ani na ang barangay bugo nga halos dako yun nga porsinto sa ilahan na bahaan gayon o di lang basta-basta ba nga baha. Delikado gayon. Takabalo rabata nga ang bugo. Medyo layo-layo ba yun sa syudad. Wala pa ba yan ta nakatukod o katong plano nga satellite sa itong CDRRMD diha sa may tablon. Diri pa biya sa sintro. Ta, medyo napay-issue sa traffic. So, mga panahon na kusog ang ulan, sila yun mabalaka perminti. So, again, Madam Chair, akong prayer tana na may joint committee hearing ani nga i-investigate ang maong dahilan nga nung naing ani karon ang bugo in kaso na ikusog kayo nga ulan. Dagan salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bernice Parsa. Yes, Councillor... Uh, Ayana Chas, you are recognized. May ngapon, ma Madam Chair, uh, to the members of this council. Uh, Madam Chair, I rejoined her from the report of Councillor Bernie Esparcia. Uh, kagahapon, nakabisita ko sa Bantilis, Bugo. Uh, Kaniyad to, sa panahon nga ga-eskwila ko sa Bugo, galabay ko na gamay nga bridge nga among gatabukan din na Madam Chair, uh, almost mga 10 feet kalahong. Karon pagbisita na ako, tagatuhod na lang, igo na lang na ako lakangan. So nakita na ako nga nanay siltation ang drainage system sa Bantilis Bugo. So kinanglan siguro, Madam Chair, nga punduhan na kini nga maong gitawag na to nga kanal kay dilit na niya ma-accommodate ang volume sa tubig nga gakahulog sa Bantilis. Nakita na ito ang nanay father na mga development, labi na kay nag-opening na ang Puerto Claveria route. No? So, dagan ang development sa taas, kaya naman tayo mga alternate route. Pero ang problema, Madam Chair, kaya ang barangay Bugo is a catch basin barangay. Ang ilang mga canal system, ang ilang riverbank system, na sa interior part good mismo sa mga residents sa barangay Bugo. So, nakita na ako nga kinanglano na nitutukan sa atong city planning na mahimuan na yun o other design na ma-improve o mapadako na to ang, maong, ang mga drainage system aning Bantilis Bugo. So, kana lang, Madam Chair, nakita na ako nga uh, mayo ang pag-deliver sa report ni uh, Councilor Bernie Espasha. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. you very much, Councilor Ariana Cha. So, refer to the uh, Committee on Infrastructure and Climate Change. And make sure that if you also have with climate change, the mitigating factor is very important. Kita, mga katauhan, dapat pareho kaya po na sa climate change, so say, ang ay buhaton to help the environment. Okay? So, any more comment? No more? So, let us proceed. The uh, Majority Floor Leader, Attorney Councilor uh, Edgar Cabanlas. There is a, Madam Chair, there is a request of Councilor Ian Adjash for a special report. You rejoined there. Lain, lain. Ah, napaka? Ayun, sabah. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So this another report. Okay, Councillor uh, Ayana Chas, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, very short report, Madam Chair. No? So, Honorable Members of the 20th City Council, led by our Honorable Vice Mayor Jocelyn Bibo Rodriguez, friends and media and guests, good afternoon. This is special report related to the order of reinstatement of Honorable Marvin G. Biha and Honorable uh, Tyler Sia for the dismissal issued by the Ombudsman. Let me give you a little background of this case on January 10, 2019. The suspension order comes up by the Office of the Ombudsman directing the removal of Honorable Marvin G. Biha and Honorable Kagawa Tyler, Tyler Sia. However, the respondent filed for a motion for reconsideration questioning the decision. On December 21, 2020, the suspension order of dismissal was reversed and set aside and the complaint against the respondent, Honorable Biha and Kagawad Tyler, was dismissed. However, the order was repeated refused by the Honorable Rexy Tinampay for a very long time. Now, here are the order of the office of the Ombudsman issued on July 4, 2023, directing the reinstatement of Honorable Chairman Marvin Biha with the phrase immediately uh, reinstatement. Now, therefore, Madam Chair, I am humbly asked this body with its discretion to implement immediately reinstatement of the petitioner as ordered by the Office of the Ombudsman. I would like also to refer this to the Department of Interior and Local Government. Let it be noted, as they reminded by the Office of the Ombudsman that the refusal or failure by any officer of, to observe and, and implement the decision and, ad, and orders shall be ground for the disciplinary action. This is an attribute that of the constitutional mandate of the Ombudsman to keenly observe in law and jurisprudence. Thank you and God bless, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Ayan Achas. Uh, Refer to the committee. Refer to the? DLG. DLG. Uh, okay. Barangay Affairs. Okay, Barangay Affairs. Refer to Barangay Affairs and to the city, DLG, city, DLG okay. office. So that's the end of the special report uh, portion of okay, our Okay, thank you agenda. very much. We proceed to the business of the day. Uh, item number one, proposed resolution 2023-461. Returning to Barangay Council of Barangay 01 the city it's Ordinance Number no. 2, Series 2023, covering its supplemental budget number no. 1 for CY 2023 with an estimated income of 654,570 pesos and 73 centavos, with information that its ordinance is operative in its entirety. Move for its approval. Hey, no, Councillor. Uh, Lim, uh, I love you. Omnibus? Uh, Omnibus. Uh, number two, proposed solution number 2023-462, returning to Barangay Council of Barangay 29, the city. It's ordinance number two, 2023, covering its supplemental budget number one. For CY 2023, with an estimated income of 1,404,333 pesos and 86 centavos, with the information that said ordinance... Uh, is operative in its entirety. Uh, number three, uh, propose resolution number 2023-463 returning to Barangay Council of Barangay number 38, the city, its ordinance number one, series of 2022, covering its annual budget for CY 2023 with an estimated income of 3,098,000 pesos 894 pesos with information that its ordinance is operative in its entirety. Number four, proposed resolution number 2023-464, returning to Barangay Council of Barangay Tuburan, the city, its ordinance number two, series of 2023, covering its annual budget for CY 2023 with an estimated income of 3,345,250 pesos with information that its ordinance is operative in its entirety. May I request Councillor Alam Lim to be recognized? Councillor Alam Lim. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Councillor Alam Lim, you are recognized. Madam Chair, belated happy birthday. Thank you Hanggang very much. Sadanang. On my most approval, I move, everything is in order, I move for the approval of Purpose Resolution Number 2023-461, 2023-462, 2023-463, and 2023-464. And a second? Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second and final reading. Second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Uh, item number six, proposed resolution number 2023 Item uh, number, number, uh, number five. Uh, number five. Number five, proposed resolution number 2023-465, endorsing and interposing no, in, no objection to the operation of the move. Movie. 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 Movie La Motorcycle Taxi Company in the city of Cagayan de Oro, applied for by Mr. Wayne Hacento, general manager subject to the existing laws, rules, and regulations pertinent to two. Yes. Uh, may I request Councillor Calizo? Councillor Romeo Calizo, you are recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, my move for the approval of the said resolution. Any second? Objection. Abstain. Ah, uh, wait, ha. Huh? Councillor Balaba, yes. Question, yes. Uh, and there's a question, Councillor Gurley Balaba, you are recognized. Uh, good afternoon. I'd just like to ask if this is uh, the same as the Ancas. Taxi. It is uh, on similar situation, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, actually, in the Philippines, we are lucky to be the, one of the cities uh, chosen by uh, the DOTR for the uh, test uh, test stage for a motorcycle taxi. And uh, there are three uh, companies that were. Uh, given permit by uh, the national hierarchy, ANCAS is one, Joyride is the other one, and MOVE IT is the third one. Okay. So we, we only have two. We'll this, apply is the, joyride. this is the second one. The Joyride second, yeah. uh, has not yet applied, Madam Chair. Okay, Rasa Ima Councillor Gurley? Yeah, okay. So Councillor Roger Abadai, you recognize? I'm, this is to inquire to, to the good chairman of public utility. Whether this uh, <coughs> operation, uh, is it a test or they will now operate as a public utility? Yes, they will operate on a test stage, Madam Chair. Ah, That's why uh, there's a limit of 3,000 for, for all the three companies. 1,000 uh, 1, maximum for every company here in the city. For Move It, uh, for instance, they're allowed only a maximum of 1,000 riders, Madam Chair. Now, my, my concern, Madam Chair, is that uh, uh, we are already flooded with motorcycles. Maapanay problema sa bao-bao karon nga gatubangon sa siyudad. If we will allow all these operators, Cagayan de Oro will be uh, experiencing a traffic uh, problem. Yes, uh, This is a challenge indeed of enforcement, uh, Madam Chair, because uh, these ones are being permitted by the hierarchy and these are the legally allowed ones. The others, just like the Bao Bao, until now, they're illegal, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Romeo Caliso. Yes, you're satisfied? Satisfied, uh, Councillor Roger Abadai? Uh, that, that is true. They are authorized by the uh, IMF, but they have also to consider the situation of our city. Okay, lang sila makaprob dito, pero we are the end uh, user sa ilang uh, program. So, kisa may mag-suffer. It's not the Manila people, it is the city of Cagayan de Oro. So, I think, uh, I hope that uh, testing pa man eh. So, 
the city of Caganiro has also the jurisdiction or discretion to allow it or not. So this is a testing stage. Yes, Councilor Attorney uh, Edgar Cabanlas. Uh, this is a pilot uh, project. It's not yet a pilot. Uh, it's yeah. not yet uh, a regular application for uh, operation, and uh, that this will be subject to styling okay. uh, through the secretary. Okay. Nadili panisya. Final. Final. It's just only. It's only a study part of. More uh, feasibility study, pa ba? Kung pwede ba? Of course, we can limit the number of motorcycles. We have that power. This is my idea. The motorcycle is malumus. So, okay. Any objection? Abstention? Uh, one abstention, Councillor Agasuan. How about the rest? Are we okay? Yes. Abstain, uh, Councillor Roger Abaday? Yes, yes. And Councillor Ayana Chas. Am I right? Okay, abstention. So, any second? Objection? None? With three abstention, uh, motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second and final reading. Any second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Number six, third, please. Item number six is proposed resolution number 2023-466. Adapting the order of the Committee on Ethics and Blue Ribbon on BR case number 2023-08, entitled Ms. Jonathan Ramonal Imano, complainant versus Honorable Ronald M. Senu, Punong Barangay of Barangay number 32, respondent, for leasing or renting to unknown individuals the portion of the lot owned by Mrs. Matilde Viuda de Ramonal, wife of the late Mr. Rusto Ramonal, without the consent of the said owner ears. Dismissing the seed case for lack of interest and failure of complainant to comply with the orders of the seed committee. Committee sponsors, Committee on Ethics and Blue Ribbon, and Committee on Laws and Rules. Madam Chair, may I request uh, that Councillor Joey Abu be recognized? Councillor Joey Abu, you recognize? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I move for his approval. Second. And a second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is here by carried. Move to approve on second and final reading. And a second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Number seven, Turk. Item seven is proposed resolution number 2023-467. Adapting the decision of the Committee on Ethics and Blue Ribbon on BR case number 2022-09 entitled Honorable Lee Ilumba Nilias, Honorable Rogelio M. Waniwan, and Honorable Flor Delis Im Hava, complainants, versus Honorable Josdado T. Wabi, Honorable Delia T. Wabi, and Miss Lysel D. Kilantang, all of Barangay no. 31 respondents, for alleged ghost activity with an allocated budget, finding the respondents guilty of dishonesty and misconduct, and suspending them for a period of four months. Committee Sponsors, Committee on Ethics and Blue Ribbon, and Committee on Laws and Rules. Madam Chair, before I move for its approval, I would like to make a correction that the treasurer... What is the name of the treasurer? Mrs. Kilantang be deleted from this decision, considering the, the fact that he is not an elective official. Ah, okay. So delete... Uh... Okay, we, we Kilantang. Kagawad, so Ms. Kilantang, here. okay. So this will this decision will refer only to the barangay captain and Kagawad. Kagawad. Okay. So move for the approval of this uh, committee report. And a second? Objection. Objection. So, Councillor Attorney Joey Abu? So there being a discussion? Yes. yes, please. Thank you again, Madam Presiding Officer. Uh, let me just uh, make this as brief as possible. Uh, in this case, Madam Chair, as a Vice Chair of the Blue Ribbon Committee, I submitted my dissenting opinion on this uh, case, considering that uh, I had other findings on the matter and may be allowed to summarize this dissenting opinion para po sa kasayuran sa uban o ginaot po nga before we adopt this uh, measure uh, 
basin o malamdagan po ang uban. No. Uh, this case stem from a alleged ghost activity of the said barangay. Uh, a basketball activity which was uh, sponsored by the said Barangay Council of Barangay 31. Now, uh, this case was uh, filed by the said members of the Barangay Council and uh, the committee took cognizance on this case. I dissented or, dis or did not agree to the said recommendation of the committee that this, the respondents would be sanctioned for a suspension for four months on the following grounds. Ang mga allegation sa complainants batok sa mga sinumbong kay wala masuportahan maskin isa ka ebidensya. Sa mga dokumento nga gi-attach sa affidavit complaint sa mga complainant mao ang mga public documents sama sa vouchers, payrolls, uh, activity designs ug uban pa. Sa ilang allegation nga ang nagkandak kuno og ghost activity ang mga sinumbong wala kini siya para sa ako ah, basihan o nagpabilin gihapon nga aligasyon. It must be noted, Madam Chair, that uh, last year, the good counselor Alam Lim made a special report about this. He prayed that we pass a resolution ordering the city accounting office to conduct an investigation to which I said it would be properly be referred to the Committee on Blue Ribbon for investigation. Again, during the committee hearing, the complainants again prayed that the committee will order the city accounting office to conduct an investigation and to produce documents related to the said transaction, to which, again, I manifested in the said committee hearing that we cannot do so. Dili namo na mabuhat kay in that way, we will be adducing evidence for the complainants. Kami nagid hinuon ang mga tao ug ebidensya para sa complainants. And uh, also I cited nga dapat before they file this case before the committee, they should have attached the necessary documents which they think will support their allegations and not that the committee will adduce the evidence for them. Gani on the contrary, ang maong mga dokumento nga kung gibang mention vouchers, payrolls, everything attached in their affidavit complaint, which forms part as their evidence. Nakapamatuod naman hinuon yun, hinuon, nga ang maong activity na pahigayon sa maong barangay, contrary to what they alleged that this activity was a ghost activity. These documents, I must put emphasis on this that these documents are public documents which the complainants did not refute the veracity and authenticity of these documents. Furthermore, these documents were submitted to the Commission on Audit where the said agency also did not find any irregularity. Second, as to the allegation nga wala na conduct ang nakadak ang maong basketball ang uh, liga sulod sa barangay 31 nga nagpamatuod kuno hinuon na this activity is a ghost activity dili gihapon ni necessarily tinuod walay balaod o isa ka rule nga nagingon nga bawal ang usa ka barangay council magkandak og activity outside its jurisdiction sa ilang barangay otherwise i would suggest the, to the barangays that we will stop conducting activities sa mga hotel o uban pang lugar and conduct it, their activities inside their barangays. Same holds true na dapat man gihapon buhaton sa konseho sa barangay 31 ang basket, uh, pwede man gihapon buhaton sa konseho sa barangay 31 ang maong basketball nga liga gawas sa ilahang barangay especially nga wala sila covered court sa ilang barangay. Gani, the complainants impliedly, impliedly admitted that the said activity really transpired when they alleged in their complaint, naasa ilang complaint, ilang giingon, 
nga wala gani gikandak ang basketball nga liga sa ilang barangay pero naa sa laing barangay. Buot pa sa buot, they admitted that this activity really existed. As to the allegation nga dili residente kuno ang participants, I urge everyone to check the records and see for yourselves. Walay maskin isa kabuk tao ang nitistigo o nag-execute o affidavit nga dili sila taga Barangay 31. Sa ilang aligasyon nga pagpabilin nga aligasyon, walay ebidensya nga nagsuporta. Therefore, it remains to be hearsay. Although admitted, but not given weight in any proceedings, even in administrative proceedings. Finally, as to the quantum of evidence in ruling administrative cases, it must be remembered, it is substantial evidence, yes. Dili in anak ka kailangan get approved like in a criminal case nga there is beyond reasonable doubt nga nakasala ang tao. Kini substantial evidence lang. It must be remembered that the burden of proof sa pagpamatuod sa ilang kaso is a responsibility of the complainant. Mao dapat ang complainant ang magpamatuod. Kay wala man sila ebidensya nga napresentar nga magpamatuod sa ilang sumbong, mao ang nag, mao nang nagrekomendar ko nga i-dismiss ang kaso. And there is also this discussion nga wala sila nagtubag. Again, we have lawyers here, my co colleagues in the legal profession, and I'm sure they would agree on me that uh, even if the respondent did not reply or file this answer, where in this case they have, ilang ibuat, they have also a position paper. Ibuta na tog wala, nagbutang og answer. Still, the burden of proof is with the complainants, and we must determine and examine the evidences and allegations made by the complainants, even without the answers of the respondents. Finally, to end, we must remember, uh, we, the members of the City Council, aside from our legislative duties, must exercise truth and justice, and not just by numbers. Let your conscience dictate your own judgment and not the persuasion of some. The faith of the respondent now rests upon our individual and respected hands. Therefore, before deciding, I urge my colleagues to understand more, read the records of the case, and discern deeply and pray that whatever your decisions will be, it, it is what you think is right and just, based on the evidences and not of persuasion of some. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor uh, Attorney Joy Abu. Yes, Councillor Attorney Edgar Cabanlas. Uh, I was uh, impressed by the uh, manifestation of uh, Councillor Joey. But uh, the details of the investigation was assigned to the committee. And the committee investigated pursuant to the rules and uh, we received evidence. We follow the rules. And this is now the product of uh, the investigation. Uh, can you please Wait. make your voice louder, please? Uh, this is now the product, the result of the investigation, this decision. Uh, supposedly, we are not to discuss before the pl plenary the details of that investigation because that is, the, that is part of the duty of the committee. Otherwise, uh, we will not anymore create that committee and investigate. Now, Madam Chair, members of this committee, uh, members of the City Council, we have furnished you with a decision, a detailed decision. And we have al also furnished you with a copy of the dissenting, dissenting opinion. So, everything here is fair. We have, we have, members are given the time to discern, read, and interpret what we said in our uh, respective uh, and the decision and the deciding opinion. And it is now the 
proper authority of decision council to either to adopt that decision or not. It is not go back anymore to the details of, uh, because there will be no end of this investigation if we will allow that. One thing I can, I can uh, uh, tell the, the members of the city council, that we have given a chance to the respondent to respond and to lay on the table their defense. They did not. They give, they give us, they furnish us only a copy of a position paper which is one page in, in length. So, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I asked their counsel, their lawyer, Tony Gunn, Attorney Gunn, you have not submitted your, your, position, your, your counter affidavits despite the lapse of about three months. And you're only given 15 days. Are you considering this disposition paper now as your uh, counter affidavit? He said yes. So we can now proceed rendering our decision? Yes. So I think, uh, Councillor Dewey, uh, I'm not saying Sayupsia uh, or something. But, uh, I mean, we have to decide, we have to decide. And this is now the product of the decision, the consensus of the, ma of the members of the majority, members of that committee, that there is a finding of guilt based on evidence. So, um, Madam Chair, considering the fact that there is an objection, I will mo request the Honorable Chair to call for a division of the house okay so any more comment okay so let us divide the house okay can they please uh, those who are in favor of the suspension please raise your right hand Those who are not in favor of the suspension, please raise your right hand. There is 11 for suspension and 4 for, not sus uh, for non suspension. So, uh, motion is approved. Move to approve. On second and final. Any reading. second? Any objection? Same objection. Same position? Okay. Same votes? Oh. Four. Eleven against four. Okay. So. So, uh, motion is hereby carried. And, uh, uh, subsidiary, subsidiary resolution, Madam Chair, I move for a resolution uh, authorizing the mayor to implement this decision immediately. Okay, resolution for the mayor to implement this uh, the the decision Mayor and DILG. DILG, not the mayor. I I either. Did. It's I either did. the mayor or the DILG yeah. head. Uh, I think both. Uh, okay. So there is this resolution. Any second? Objection? Same, same objection, same, same position? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second and final reading. Any second? Same position? Four. Motion is hereby carried. Number eight. Uh, proposed resolution number 2023-468. Item 8, proposed resolution number 2023-468, supporting House Bill number 7576, entitled An Act Providing for Early Voting by Qualified Senior Citizens, Persons with Disabilities, PWDs, Lawyers and Human Resources for Health in National and Local Elections. Filed by Honorable Rufus B. Rodriguez, Second District Congressional Representative of Cagayan de Oro City. Authored by Honorable City Vice Mayor Jocelyn B. Rodriguez. And all members. And all members. And sponsored by the Committee on Senior Citizens and Committee on Laws and Rules. 
Well, may I request Councillor Caliso to be recognized? Mm, okay. Councillor Romeo Caliso, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, may I move for the approval of this resolution? And a second. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second and final re reading. Any second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Item number nine, pr approving the uh, proposed ordinance number 2023-269. Approving the application of Mr. Rodrigo Z. Go, President Lumbia Octagon Sports Arena, Barangay Lumbia, the city for a permit to conduct invitational two-day five-stack derby at the said arena on August 15 and 17, 2023. May I request Councillor Abaday be recognized. Councillor Roger Abaday, you are recognized. Uh, considering that the proposed ordinance is in accordance with a law or ordinance, I move to approve. Any second? Objection. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second and final reading. Any second? Objection. Fiesta ni? Fiesta? Objection. <laughs> I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Uh, motion to include uh, items 10. And uh, there is a uh, request of Councillor Gurley for the passage of that uh, ordinance in favor of the PWD to be receiving a social pension. But we don't have a copy now. And I told her that uh, especially okay. that this is an appropriation ordinance. And in August, I'm going to see Councillor Gurley. Okay, na, Councillor? Okay, okay. okay, so next session. I just oh. signed the the Los Andros has just signed the, the so we'll the attachment for next. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So let's proceed. So move to uh, approve inclusion number ten. Huh? Inclusion. Inclusion. Move for inclusion, Madam Chair. Second. Item 10. Objection. I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Uh, item ten, Torch. Item 10 is proposed resolution number 2023-469, authorizing Honorable City Mayor Orlando E. Uy, representing the City Government of Cagayan de Oro, to apply for a survey authority and gratuitous special land use with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, covering a parcel of land, a portion of Lot 21327, CAD 369D, with an area of 60 hectares, more or less, located at Sitio, Nahilaran, Barangay, Dan Sulihon, this city a site of the proposed City College campus, certified urgent by Honorable City Mayor Orlando A. Uy. Uh, this is for our City College, so I request Madam Chair that all members should be author. Okay. Move for its approval. Any second? Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. Move to approve on second final reading. Second. Objection? I hear none. Motion is hereby carried. There have been no other matters to take up. Motion to adjourn. Motion adjourn. God bless us all. Happy birthday to me.